shall we begin with the word of prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessing of being called the children. Thank you for yet another time we have met us upon and think about you and pray that you may bless us again as we're going to study your word. We know that our thinking is very low compared to yours, and our understanding cannot be matched with yours. So please, we pray that come and speak to us. Help us to understand the things we're going to, to study because here we are dealing with the, the most things in our eyes and our hearts. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The second part of the fourth commandment, this will take us something to do with three or oh, it can take us to three to four parts because this is a very important subject that really requires us to understand. In fact, by the end of this lecture, we are going to have another mind concerning the Sabbath. Remember, we saw in the first, in the, in the first one that uh, the Sabbath was made for man. So man is the beneficiary. If he doesn't keep it, then he has lost. And um, our key text has always been John 14, 15 to 16. If ye love me, keep my commandments. So the, the way we show love to God is when, when we keep his commandments. But I believe everyone knows that when you, when you are beginning to love someone, you don't keep his commandments or you don't really listen, but you start loving one another. And what shows that really someone loves you is the things he does back to prove that he really loves the person. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, and so that is the condition that he may abide with you forever. That's a condition for getting the Holy Spirit. Today, many people claim to have the Holy Spirit, but they don't keep God's commandments, neither do they show that they love him. Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord uh, by doing exactly what God tells us, and that's what shows that we are obedient to him. Exodus chapter 31 verse 18 tell, told us, and, and he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communion, communing with him upon Sinai, two tablets of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. So this has nothing to do with man. It is God who wrote it himself. And we saw that God wrote three times, at Sinai, at the fall of Babylon, and at, when he was confronted with a woman who was supposed to be stoned, and he wrote down, and they all went away. When he talks, when God is writing down, it's always about his law. So we should be very careful when you're dealing with the law of God. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So conversion of the soul has to do with the law of God. So if you want your soul to be converted, real conversion, it's the law of God. Faith leads to the process of conversion. And the process of conversion has, to, has something to do with walking in the way of the Lord. And that will be the blessed and the proud on the way. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. So the heart will always rejoice. When, it, when the commandments of the Lord are given to it, and it will make them pure. And we saw that blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So this is the sanctification process. And it also told us that it enlightens the eyes. So in other words, you, you, your way of viewing things is very different. You view, view things differently. You can see what others don't see. So if you want to have that vision, please the commandments of the Lord will give you purity of mind, purity of sight, and will enlighten your sight and see things differently. And God is people who keep his commandments, see things differently. And that's why the world will renounce them, that these people really do not deserve to be here and persecute them because the way they see things is very different. Let's reread the commandment. Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11. 
Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. We saw that to remember because it's the only thing Adam saw. This is something that man has experience about that he has always known. He never saw the creation of anything except only the Sabbath rest. And he was told to keep it as he saw it honored on that day. And six days we are supposed to labor and do all our work, all of it. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord, thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and blessed the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So today we are looking at some important things within this commandment. It is the Lord, then in it thou shalt not do any work, and nor thy dash in thy gates, made in six days. Let's have a look at each of these. Uh, Ellen White in Councils to Teachers writes, 338, paragraph 5, the Sabbath memorial declaring who the living God is, the creator of the heavens and the earth. So the Sabbath is a memorial declaring to the living God, declaring who the living God is, the creator of the heavens and the, and the earth. So the Sabbath is a reminder. That's why it is remembered. It's a memorial that reminds us who will be. We are. Mark chapter 2, verse 27, 28. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And the word Lord we saw is Master, Supreme in authority. By implication, owner. In fact, if you look at the one when they say the word Lord, landlord means the owner of the land or the Supreme in authority when it comes to the land. So, curious simply means uh, the one who is supreme in authority. So, when it comes to the Sabbath, the Son of Man is supreme in authority. When he says this, then the one who was made on that Sabbath should simply listen and do what he said. So, the Son of Man is, is, the, is supreme in authority, and man is, is the one who was made. The Sabbath was made for him by his Lord for what purpose? We saw that and we are going to see it further. If we look at the word, the way the word is used here in Psalms 23, uh, verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So the owner of me, or the supreme in authority, is my shepherd. So in other words, the sheep, no, if the sheep know that the one who is supreme in authority is my shepherd, that means even if I see a wolf coming, the one who is supreme in authority is my shepherd. I shall not want. There is nothing that I can fear. And the word there, want, used, is to lack, to fail. I can never fail. I can nothing can ever lessen with what I have. So how many people fear when they know that the Lord is the shepherd? That means they don't really believe that the one who created them is their shepherd. So the shepherd can say, I think this sheep can go away. Don't think that you have lost. No. If the shepherd is the Lord your God, if he says this sheep should rest, nothing has lacked upon you. Nothing. Nothing has lessened. Nothing has changed. Nothing will decrease 
abetted the bereaved make lower. Nothing. So when we lose something, if, if it's a, a job, if you believe the shepherd, your shepherd is the one in supreme in authority in the, in the entire universe, then if he has decided that one of your siblings should rest, or one of your parents should should should, should uh, rest. Don't think at any time that something has lessened. Don't think that anything has decreased or has caused to fail. Mm -hmm. Nothing. It is just if you believe that, then you don't believe that the one who created you is your shepherd. And it is interesting how the NIV writes it to say, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. The NLT says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. And the, the TPT, which is the Passion Translation, says, yeah, Yahweh is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. These translations have a problem. The focus here is that when you are when you have what you have, please just know that if the man changes anything and removes anything, nothing has decreased, nothing has changed. So in other words, you are still the same one as you are. Nothing has decreased. It's not about the amount. It just know that the man is in control. And the word my Lord was used by Abraham when he was talking, when he saw God come to him, when the Lord appeared to him and said, my Lord, do not pass by. Come and dwell in my place. He welcomed them. The same thing did Lot. So, Meaning, he recognized him that you are the supreme in authority. So please come and speak. And that's why when he spoke in, in uh, verse 20, 12 to 23, therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also. So Sarah called Abraham my Lord. So Abraham was supreme in authority, according to Sarah. That's why when Abraham told Sarah, where we are going, say to that man, you are my sister. Sarah never even thought about it, just did what was told her. That's why God doesn't blame Sarah for that, because that was she knew that Abraham was alone. And the Lord said unto Abraham, now we have another Lord here. We have Lord, my Lord, and Lord. So there is small Lord and capital Lord here. And, and the capital is Yahweh, Jehovah, which is self-existent or eternal. That is the Jewish name for God. And yet when you come to the my Lord here is Adon, Adon, which is sovereign. So you can be just the sovereign in the house and you can say everything and everyone does your bidding. So what Sarah was saying, that my the one who is supreme in authority, even if he tells me anything, I don't think anything will work out. But she did not know that the, the overall authoritative one, self-existent, eternal, was seated there speaking, and even Abraham could not change even a word. Now, today, do we recognize that in the church, who speaks louder? Small Lord, those who are now in, in the supreme or sovereign, maybe a pastor or elder speaks, but do we know that, that there is a greater one who speaks and nothing can be changed? Let's think about that. Now, Genesis chapter 3 tells us why she said so. 
that thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. So she knew that Abraham was the ruler. And when, he, when Abraham speaks, it's fine. Because Abraham was connected with God. That's why even uh, Eve knew very well that her husband was the controller and the ruler. But she, she forgot that and went and ate. She got another one. And the only way she could be brought back in harmony was when she would recognize that the husband now should be the ruler over. So the church may go apostate and listen to, to Satan, but the only way that it can come back to, to its senses is when it allows Christ, the husband, to rule over her and have the supreme authority and never listen to anyone else. So when it comes to the Sabbath, who is the Lord of the Sabbath? Christ. And the word here used for rule in Hebrew, mashal, means to have dominion, to govern, to reign, to have power. So it, she, she has been told that please acknowledge, because this verse is prophetic, you wife or you uh, woman church acknowledge Christ as thy husband because that's what uh, Isaiah 54 verse 5 tells us and he Christ will have dominion over you will reign over you will have power so when you give him authority around you no one will ever touch you again no one will ever deceive you you have been deceived just because you had someone else to rule over you. You obeyed that one. But now come back here and obey him and you'll see how things will go well with you. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 has the way it puts it. But my God shall supply all your need, not needs, need, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So when he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. I shall not want. It means that God will supply all your need. So you have one need is Christ. And if you pray, ask, God will supply your need. You need only Christ. And it says, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So you see, so your need is Christ. That's why Christ will bring them. So if you want God to give you everything, acknowledge Christ, and God will supply all your need through Christ. Because all what you need. Christ. Christ is all your need. By him, through him, him in you. In it, thou shalt not do anything. After we have seen that Christ is the Lord, and is the Lord of the Sabbath, and the Bible says for the Lord. This is the Sabbath of the Lord. In other words, it is the Sabbath of the screaming authority. Even if it is at work, when they chase you, no problem. The screaming authority is around. It is his Sabbath. So when they chase you, have no worry. Why do we get worried when it comes to Sabbath, when the scream in authority is the one who has told us to rest? He tells you, pick today on Friday and leave that food tomorrow. It shall not go bad. We do not believe that because we don't acknowledge that the one, the one who is supreme in authority as the, is the one who has commanded it. We don't acknowledge that. So if he can even command the food not to go bad, do we believe that? There are many so-called, let me even say that, so-called Adventists or Sabbath keepers who cannot even believe that God can keep their food 
until the next day without causing problems to their lives. Obey the Lord because he is your shepherd and the next day you shall want nothing. In it, thou shalt not do any work. Now, Ellen White will, will tell us something about it. Bless us with Genesis chapter 2, verse 10, his work. So as it was beginning, made, and he rested on the seventh on, he, he rested, he ended his work, and the whole of it, he rested on the seventh day, all of it. From how much? All his work with he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from how much? All his work which God created and made. So God tells us, in it thou shalt not do any. So in other words, do all your work, no work on this day. Ellen White writes in the book Councils for the Church 263 paragraph 3 says we should jealously guard the edges of the Sabbath. Listen carefully. Jealously guard the beginning and end of the Sabbath. Why? Because in it inside. Now you cannot know in it, you shall not do any work, except if you know the ages of the Sabbath. Many people know the age of the Sabbath, the, the beginning age of the Sabbath is early morning in the Sabbath school. At the beginning of Sabbath school is the beginning of Sabbath. No, the Sabbath begins at sunset. This is why many people Consider coming early on, coming to church early in the morning. That and if you come late, then they say they come late on Sabbath, as if Sabbath is nine, nine, nine a.m. That that is when Sabbath begins. In their brain, in their minds, they don't believe that the Sabbath edge is at the beginning. Sunset to sunset. That is the edge, the, the ends, the edges. So remember that every moment is consecrated. Holy time. Whenever work has the hours from Friday noon until the beginning of the Sabbath, such that they can be ready, they can know, they can be ready to guard those edges. So employees, employers, from schools, even churches, at churches, the Ascaris, or security people, we have cooks, we have all these people, Please notice that these people need these hours to guard the Sabbath edges. Give them time for preparation that they may welcome the Lord this day with quietness of mind. By such a course, you will suffer no loss even in temporal things. So do we, know, do we see why today we have a suffering in temporal things? Why? Because we don't guard the edges of the Sabbath. I know of a certain institution, a, 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 a Jewish institution, because this is a series called The Jew and the Samaritan, which is the Adventist uh, institution that preached to, uh, uh, to a security guard who was a non Adventist. And when the man was able to believe the gospel and he was baptized, he, he read the, the, the he was told that the Sabbath we should rest and we should gather the edges of the Sabbath. The man stopped working on Sabbath. By sunset he was home, and the and the and the and the council sat, and they chased 
the man from his work. She was withdrawn from the work and, and expelled. Why? Because he has not worked on Sabbath. Yet they are the ones who preached and baptized him. Question, was that preaching working on the people themselves? No. So are there people who are going to, to remain on earth, yet they preach to many who got converted? Yes. Employers, please, you have the greatest the greatest pain, you have the greatest crime of not God helping people to guard jealously the edges of the Sabbath. We need to help them. Let them go home as early as possible. Then the rest is theirs. Then God will guard also your temporal work. Even your work which you do, God will guard it because yeah, he is the supreme in authority. Why worry tomorrow? Why? Because God has commanded and has said, you let them rest. Leave the rest to him. If you believe, he is the shepherd. And you shall not want the next day. Even the whole week you will not want. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 13 to 15. The commandment rewritten. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that, they, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. So if you believe you are going to rest, but you leave these people known to rest, you have not rested. Now, you have to understand the commandment very well. You can never rest as the employer if your employees are not resting. Because God, when he rested, he showed Adam how to rest. So when God rests, he expects his creatures to rest in his completed work. Now, if you, the, employ the employer, you rest, they continue working, then they are not resting in your completed work because the work is not yet complete. They're still working. So what are you resting? So you better continue working because your work is not yet complete. So you are resting. They are not. And remember that you may thy mind, thy man servant, and thy maid servant may rest as well as thou. I like the word as well as. If I take it literally, look how well you have rested. Rest. Why would they work and you sit? How many of, uh, of us can even hire people to come and cook for us on Sabbath? The strangers, we give them to, to, to come and work. They are becoming our man servant. They should rest as well. So on the Sabbath, God expects you to, to give them rest. If the cattle should not work, if then ox, the ox, by the way, there is the implement of work, the tractor, the what, everything that you use for working. The, the ass was used for transport. So is it possible that God expects even the implement of your transport to rest as well? Think about it. And remember that thou wast the servant in the land of Egypt. In other words, you never had any freedom. You were a servant. You had no cattle. You had nothing. You had nothing. None of this was yours. So, if now you have been brought out, then through a mighty hand by a stretched out arm, 
and now you have property. Isn't it important that if God set you free and, and commands you to keep the Sabbath because you were a slave, isn't it important that you also acknowledge that these people have been seven, six days working for you? They need also to be free and let them free to know that they can also have a rest and have been redeemed from thy labor. Think about it. How many of us would sit back and enjoy the Sabbath while our maid servant and the man servant are busy working? The Bible says, excuse me, you will not be resting. Why? Because when God rested, his creatures, he expects them to rest with him. Now, if you, you rest and your creatures don't rest, then they are not yours. You have declared to God openly that these are not mine. They are not under my control. So I have nothing. Then when God says, let them be taken away, please don't complain. He will send something or someone and they will be taken. Why? Because they have been working on Sabbath. And they are no longer in your hands. They are, they are, not, they are resting. They are not resting. So please, let me take them away. And then you cry and mourn. For what? If you were a, a servant in the land of Egypt, look at these people as your servants as well in the land of Egypt. When God brought thee out through a, then through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm, isn't it important on Friday to also think about these people? So if God commanded you, commands you to keep the Sabbath, you should command as well everyone in your household to rest. If they don't rest, then they are not in your possession. They are not yours. So it is better go to take them away because they don't belong to you. Because even the stranger, that is within the gate. Question, to whom is the Sabbath commanded? To them that had been in Egypt and were free. So if you have never been freed from Egypt, please don't keep the Sabbath. It is wrong to enforce Sabbath keeping to people to, in schools. Why? Because we are going to see a reason. We are going to see a reason. Because God first freed them from Egypt, and then he commanded them to keep the Sabbath. So now that everyone who should be in the house should, should be free. Let us look at that. Hebrews 4, 1 to 5. Let us see that freedom. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his race, any of you should seem to come short of it. So is there spiritual rest now? Looking at it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. So they put aside faith and they strove. So even us, we may, we may have this rest just as a war accomplishing programs, but there's no faith. For we which have believed do enter into rest. So it is for the believers. As he said, I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although <coughs> the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from how much? All his works. So if Sabbath is a symbol of redemption, just as we have read, and we, are, we as well should give redemption to all that work for us, 
not to be slaves, to be free. So God did rest the seventh day from all his works. So as well, we should rest from all, not even one, all. So let's look at this all rest and what are all these works? What is this that we are laboring about? Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor, okay, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Okay, so Sabbath is symbolic. It is a symbol of God's rest from sin. Take my yoke upon you. So you see, that's why he first told them that remember you are a slave in Egypt. You are a servant. You are serving you also have servants. So if you were a servant and they took you out, which is a type of slavery from sin, Christ is telling you, come unto me that labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. So you keep striving six days, but you need a rest. We are, go we are striving all our lives with this world, but God wants to give us a rest, a spiritual rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. So you see, so that is, the system is simple, believe, walk, and the rest you will find it there. That's when I will give it to you. Come unto me, ye that labor and have laden, and I will give you rest, not I give you. I will give you. When is that? When you take the yoke and learn of him who is lowly in heart, then you will find the rest somewhere there. So the Sabbath is a symbol of the spiritual rest that God gives us. So if you do not rest, then the, then the entire typology or the symbolism is all destroyed. Ezekiel 18, 20 to 28, adds, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. We know that part. Now, listen to this. But if the wicked will turn from how many? All his sins. All his works. All his sins. You labor and a heavy land. Then we will come and I give you rest. So, all his sins, if you turn there from all of them, think about the Sabbath. If you turn there from all your work that you have done, we can turn away from all his sins that he has committed and keep all my statutes put there and keep the Sabbath and do that which is lawful as I have described it and right. He shall surely live. That is to rest, he shall not die. So you just rest, you don't die. So that's why God looks at all his people who have kept his law. He seals the tomb and says, these are mine, they're just resting. They're just resting, they're not dead. All, the trans all his transgressions that he has committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him in his righteousness, in his righteousness, this that he has done, he shall live. That's why the Bible says they follow him. It's good deeds follow him. Have I pleasure? Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Say the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live. Okay. Continues. Again, when the wicked man turneth from his wickedness that he hath committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul. Because he considereth and turneth away from how many? All his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. So Sabbath is symbolic to working 
six days. That means working all the work. So put all aside all thy sins. So strive to put away all thy sins by Sabbath. In fact, Ellen White opens up and says, make sure that on the Sabbath day, you reconcile with everyone. Put end to all sin. All. First John 1, 6 to 9. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not, do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from what? From all sin. So you see, all sin, all works. Sabbath is a symbol. So you are cleansed from all your labors. You are cleansed from all your sins. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Why? Because you are saying the cleansing is finished. If we consider ourselves, uh, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us how much our sins and to cleanse to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's why First John three five to seven tells us, and you know that He have He He was manifested to take away our sins, and in Him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in, in him sinneth not. Why? Because if you are in the Sabbath and you gather ages and you keep it holy as it is without defiling it, then you get what it gives. You get the reward. So even here, if you let Christ in you and you guard carefully that Christ remains in you, you will sin not. Because whoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Okay. So, in it. So, you have to guard the edges very well. In it. You have to know the beginning and the end. Thou shalt not do any work. So, make sure that six, in the six days they have labored because it's symbolic to the transgression. That God if that God will end. So if you continue working on the seventh day, you are saying that sin will continue even when what the work is ended. That's how dangerous it is. If you work on the Sabbath and you don't finish your work in six days and you continue on the Sabbath, then you are saying that six years, maybe 6,000 years, God will continue working the, after close of probation God will continue working even when he has rested, he has finished. No. It is finished. When he says it is finished, it is finished. No more work. So six days, please make sure you have finished all your work and rest. Because it's a symbol of the rest you're going to have forever. Continue working. You say, God, will, sin will continue and work will continue even when you are in heaven. Or in a thousand years when probation is closed. That is how dangerous it is if you continue working on the Sabbath. Another one. Know that know thy whatever in thy gates. We saw here that everyone was supposed to rest. Everyone. Now, why everyone was supposed to rest? Let's go and read. Uh, if we continue, if we read in five thirteen to fifteen, the ox, the, these things are all. The Bible says, "Thy son, thy daughter, that is yours, thy man servant, thy." That means they, you are the owner, you are the Lord. So if you are the Lord of these things or all these people, then where they are resting because you are. They honor you by resting as you do. So you should to God. So if God gave you a horizontal 
understanding of his rest that if you command these people to rest and they obey and they rest, I want you to do the same. Make sure that you have finished all your things and then you will understand my rest. God made a relationship between himself and man, but he put also a, a horizontal relationship for man to understand. He gave him a wife. So even with the Sabbath, God gave us a horizontal, because there is a vertical between us and him, but he also gave us a horizontal one that let these people rest. If you see them rest and you like it, then give me my rest as well. Honor it. If they don't honor you, then that is then you understand. Do you know that many of us, our children and our people don't honor us? just because we're not honoring the Sabbath. So God says, okay, fine. You do not want to honor me. Okay, the result, you'll see it. These ones, these people will also dishonor you that you may understand what it means. I'm not saying that that's what God is saying, but that's my thinking. Every time you are disobedient, you cannot tell a, you cannot beat a disobedient child. Why? Because that's who you are. The child is just mimicking. So, here they are to rest to show you. So, why are, if, we, if on Sabbath we don't allow people to rest, the cooks, the what? In schools, in fact, the schools violate our Advent schools, violate the Sabbath beyond imagination that surely they have become secular. Because they violate the Sabbath. They have become secular schools because they don't keep the Sabbath. The cooks continue cooking, those who are sweeping, everything continues. Why? Because the Lord, the Lords are not resting. But if they had rested themselves, they would tell these ones to rest as well. So, this we should know, that everyone in our household, if they don't rest, then we should check ourselves if we really rest on the Sabbath. Proverbs chapter 3, 9 to 10. Why should they rest? Because Proverbs tells us, Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So we are to honor the Lord with thy substance. We have read the entire substance we have. Man's servant, thy son, thy daughter, thy wife, thy everything, thy ox. All of them, honor God with them. So by telling them to rest, and you rest, all of you, you are honoring God. If you don't tell them to rest and you continue, God is not honored because you are not honoring God with thy substance. So shall thy bands be filled with plenty. You see, you see why we are poor? That's why we are poor. Because we are not honoring God with our substance. And thy praises shall burst out with new wine. So when you, when you try to get everything, everything will be in harmony. Everything will be coming out. Why? Because of keeping the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a sign of relationship. Every time you don't relate with God, even your relationship will be in a dilemma. Exodus 31, 13 to 17. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath we shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation, that you may know that I am the Lord that, that doth sanctify you. So the Sabbath is a symbol that reminds you that, please, you are being sanctified. Shouldn't you also do the same to your workers? Work and rest. Leave everything. Leave all the tools. Put them down. Let them also rest. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Now, listen carefully. It is holy unto you. But again, when you come down here, it says, holy to the Lord. Now, unto you, unto the Lord. That means there is a vertical and horizontal. 
everyone, you shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defies the it shall be surely put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off among his people. Why? Now, do we understand the verse very well? Because if you if you defile the Sabbath, you are saying God does not own you. Because he has commanded you to rest, but for you are working. Therefore, he is not in command of you. That means you are cut off from him. So, and every time you separate yourself from God, that is death. So, not keeping the Sabbath makes us de declare to, uh, to everyone in the world that we don't belong to God. I always use this example. If the king of Buganda gives an order in Buganda and says, please, all in Buganda, in my kingdom, please, all Buganda, in my kingdom, please come on, 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 on Monday and shout, hallelujah, uh, or shout, we honor our king, hail to our king. Now, what if the king comes on Monday and finds no one shouting? That means he's not in authority. And if he comes on Tuesday and finds everyone shouting, are they shouting for him? No. Why? Because he gave a sign. He, he was specific. So they declare openly that we are not yours. So all Sunday keepers declare openly that we are not in God's authority. But we are in the authority of another, which we shall see in the next episode. Six days may, may work be done. But in the seventh is the Sabbath. But in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Now, that does not mean they took them and and killed them. No. They themselves today, you declare yourself dead because you have declared that you are no longer bodies. And whoever does not have God in him is dead. Because we live in Christ. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual what? Covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. Who are the spiritual Israel? Forever you are to keep the Sabbath. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. You need a refreshment every week. Even your servants need a refreshment every week. But you, can, you can't give them a refreshment every Sunday. Why? Because it's time to resume work. And the one who commanded you said the seventh, not the first. So if we give them the, 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 the first day of the week to rest, because it is the day for them they want, then we are saying uh, uh, that's another that, that, that's another person in charge and therefore they are no longer in my authority. You give them the Sabbath. Tell them the Sabbath no one works. They will understand what it means. Who should keep the Sabbath? What should the stranger do in order to be blessed? Thus saith the Lord, keep, the, keep ye judgment and do justice. For my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. So God is about to reveal his righteousness. What does he say? Blessed. Listen carefully. As the, when the salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this. What is that? And the son of man that laid hold on it. What is that? That keepeth the Sabbath 
from polluting you and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. So you see, the Sabbath is connected with evil, with not doing evil. So not polluting it, not doing evil. So the Sabbath is connected with, with righteousness. Neither let the son of the stranger that joined himself to the Lord. He never joined the house by joining himself to the Lord. Speak saying, the Lord hath uttered separate, separate. The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tree. They cannot, because they are for the Lord. For thus says the Lord unto the eunuchs, that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. So when they choose God and do what is right, they are no longer dry. They are no longer what they are. They are free. They are free. Because God gives them the rest. Now, think about it. If God has freed these people from bondage of sin and has forgiven them, but you tell them to continue working on a Sabbath, what kind of sacrilege a sin is that? Do you know what you have done? People have been freed by God, but have been re-enslaved by you. Oh my God. So God sets people free. You, you enslave them again. That is very dangerous. Who are you to enslave what God has set free? So when, when, you, are in, when you are in bondage, God brought you out and gave you to rest on the Sabbath day. But for you, when, when you are free, when, you, when, when, when these people come to you and God forgives them, they join themselves with the Lord, you continue making them to work. My friend, it is time we change our ways. Even unto them will I bring in my house these people here, that have chosen to, to keep the Sabbath, they have chosen to please to do the thing that please God, they take hold of this covenant, even them will I bring in my house. So they have become children in the house. And within my walls, a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off, even the strangers. And also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord. So if you are a son of a stranger, but you join the Lord, how do you join him? To serve him. And how do you serve him? To obey. And to love the name of the Lord and to be his servant. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and take hold of my covenant, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. So why does God tell you to to make these people free on the Sabbath, that they should also rest. Why? Because God wants to show them his salvation as well. There are many people who believe God just by giving them the Sabbath rest. Many will believe. He will touch them. Sorry, Isaiah 56 uh, has told us from 1 to 7. In the book, Christ Triumphant, Ellen White writes, the history of the church and the world, the loyal and the disloyal, is here plainly revealed. The loyal, under the proclamation of the third angel's message, have turned their feet into the way of God's commandment to respect, to honor, and glorify Him who created the heavens and the earth. So the Sabbath is a, is a sign of honor. So when you also command your people to rest on Sabbath day, they rest. They are honoring you as well. Don't you feel good when you tell people, please do this and they do it. So if you have that honor and you feel it is good, do the same to God. The opposing forces have dishonored God by making a breach in his law. And when light from his word has called attention to his holy commandments, 
revealing the breach made in the law by the papal authority, then to get rid of conviction, many have tried to destroy the whole law. So when they see that you show you, this is what they're supposed to do, let the law go. But could they destroy it? No. For all who will search the scriptures for themselves, we will see that the law of God stands immutable, eternal, and his memorial, the Sabbath, will endure through eternal ages, pointing to the only true God in distinction from all false gods. If we believe God and keep the Sabbath, then we have shown that we are not with the false gods, but if we do work on Sabbath, then we belong to the other false gods. The commandment says, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. In it, thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy, thy man servant, thy maid servant, thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Exodus 35, verse 1 to 3. And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord hath commanded that you should do them. What are the words? Six days shall work be done. But on the seventh day, there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath rest to the Lord. So it is God's rest, but to you. is something that you should think about. It's holy to you. Because if you, it's not holy to you, then you are, you are finished. But it is a rest for the Lord, but it is holy to you. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. I like this part. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitation upon the Sabbath day. Now, this is a very perturbing one today to read. In fact, many will say, uh, those ones were the ceremonial laws. But when it comes to clean and unclean, not ceremonial. But when it talks about not kindling fire on the Sabbath, ceremonial. But when it is about other things, ceremonial, not ceremonial. What does Ellen White say about that? God's instruction not to be disregarded. Speak not lightly of the restrictions placed upon Israel in Sinai regarding the cooking of manna. The Lord hath placed barriers around his Sabbath that it may not be regarded with the least carelessness or irre irrelevance. Today, many churches have disregarded the Sabbath and are have, and have treating it carelessly and irre irrelevant. When the Lord says, tomorrow is the rest of the Sabbath, bake that which he will bake to death, and see that which you will save, save that which you save. He means that Friday shall be our preparation day, in which we are to do how much? All our cooking. All. Why? Because the one who, who is in authority, abs or absolute supreme authority, is the one who has commanded and is the shepherd. So when the tomorrow comes and the shepherd is in control, why worry? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want when it comes to tomorrow. He knows. But we say, no, no, no. People have this and this and this. What kind of leader is, is that? The Sabbath is not to be a day when tidbits shall be prepared or cooked. Tidbits. If it is really essential to have beans on the Sabbath, let them be cooked on Friday and kept warm in the oven. So find a modern uh, way of oven if, or a local way that keeps the food warm to tomorrow without the fire. Not to be eaten cold unless preferred. Unless you prefer, except you have preferred 
quote, the beans are not supposed to be cold. Why don't you add that part, unless preferred? I can prefer them to be cold. Why not? If you want them co co cold, no problem. If you want them warm, no problem. But let no, no remarks. Huh? Sorry. They need not to be eaten cold unless prepared. But let no remarks be made as though it is a very light thing whether we regard the special requirements of God in regard to the Sabbath or not. So today we have made it very a very light thing uh, by putting remarks and saying, no, you see, uh, it was saying that we should we should cook it. How do you else how else can you make it warm? Why not? Or not, it is not left. It is it is not left for any man or woman to venture to disregard any commandment of God. Please don't venture on this subject to disregard the commandment of God because one day your people, your servants, your children will venture as well to disregard all your rules in the house. And that's when you will know how painful it is. They will take it lightly. No, daddy, does not mean that. It is okay. We can, we can do it this way. How many would, would love it when the children take your commandments lightly? So please make sure you, you brush my, my, my shoes with black and clean them. And it's the children say, no, 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 that, that never meant that. No. He, he just talks about the color, but it doesn't matter. The next day, you, you, you'll know. Uh, you'll feel it. And then you, uh, you know what it means. 12 manuscripts, 3, 2, 4, paragraph 2. We are to be ready and waiting for the orders of God. Nations will be starring will be stirred to their very center. Support will be withdrawn from those who proclaim God is only standard of righteousness, the only sure test of character. All and all who will not bow to the decrees of the nations, the national councils, and obey the national laws to exalt the Sabbath instituted by man, the man of sin, to the disregard of God's holy day, will feel not to the oppressive power of popery alone, but the protestant world, the image of the beast. This is what we shall see in the next lecture about the Sabbath. Now we're going to see why was this part all removed? Why did they remove that other part of the, whole, the, the servant? And why were they removed, all of them? Why? Watch out for the next episode. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to us. We have heard your voice. Thank you for refreshing our memory to really know that you, you love us and surely you rebuke us because you said, all that I love, I chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. We come to you, Lord, that please forgive us. Now we have said and have known that the Sabbath is, is a very big symbol that if violated, it sends another message and the entire typology won't make sense. Lord, help us to do what is right. In Jesus' name, amen.